Hey, fellas. Mmm. Gotta throw the wave in there. <clears throat> Welcome to part two of ICM's 148 scale B26. In this exciting episode, I'll be showing you how I paint the interior. Now, I've, I think I've touched on this before. I, I, I might have shown how I do my interiors on uh, another build series, but I figured I would be... Uh, uh, make make this build series a little more in depth. I get a lot of questions on you know how did you do this, how did you do that, because a lot of my videos I kind of skip through stuff, and just because there's a lot to pack in without making the videos extremely long, and I try to keep them under 30 minutes. But in this uh, in this episode, we go through my entire process of painting the interior. Now I love this kit. I got most of it put together, and I'll show you how it all goes together in, in uh, the next video, but uh, it's it's a really good kit. I really like it. And uh, I don't have the fuselage together yet. I'll probably be doing that today after I upload this video, but I've already got the wings done. Um, I, I'm adding something a little extra. I think I showed on the last video with the bombs and the, uh, the tanks. Well, not the bombs, but uh, I'm putting rockets and I got those in yesterday, and I got that kind of sorted out. I had to rearrange my holes on the wings, but that wasn't that big of a deal. But uh, after I get the fuselage together and get the seams taken care of, then uh, I'll be able to put it all together, get the glass in, and uh, start painting. And I uh, had a comment, actually, when I woke up this morning on my old uh, B25 video, and the guy said uh, he wished he... Uh, Wish they could see the whole weathering process. So I will put in on um, a couple videos from now, I will show my entire process of how I'm going to weather this and I'm going to weather the heck out of it. So uh, no more yapping. Let's get on with the video. Okay, to start off with, what I did is I primed it in black and then I took the uh, light gray and went down and sprayed it from top to bottom so I get the highlights on top and the darker areas on the bottom, just to give me a little bit more depth. Now you can use white, I typically use white, but I had this light gray already, already out, so I just went ahead and used that. And for the primers that I like to use are the uh, Mr. Surfacer, uh, Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black, I love this, one of my favorite primers. And then the same thing in the light gray. Now. The color I'm going to paint everything is the interior green, and to me it doesn't really have an interior green, so I've mixed some up. I don't recall exactly what the mix was, but because uh, it's kind of rubbed off, <laughs> I've had it for a while. But uh, you can, I'll, I'll put a uh, link in the description. I know I've handed it out a couple times, but there's a really good web page that has all the Tamiya mixes. Don't know who put it together but it seems to work. So next what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, thin this down and I'll come in here and spray all the interior parts with the interior green. And, and, and I wanna make sure that I don't cover up all my highlights, so I wanna, I wanna have it pretty thin. And then we'll come in and do some hand painting, maybe some highlights. Uh, a lot of times what I like to do is really lighten this up and then brush on some highlights. But uh, we'll tackle that once I get this all painted with the, uh, the interior green color. Okay, now I've got them all painted with the base coat. And I didn't, as you can see, I didn't flood it with color. I just uh, hit it real, real lightly so all my pre-shading shows up. And sometimes you want to make this a little more stark than you would otherwise because it is going to be inside and kind of hard to see. So now what I do next is I start with the uh, with black. So now I'm going to paint all the parts that are going to be black like the front of the instrument panel, the uh, the top of the console here, all these little radios and stuff. So that's my next step and what I like to use for hand painting is Vallejo paints. Now this is the model color, so this isn't the airbrush stuff. You can thin it down for your airbrush, but uh, from my experience, this stuff just seems to clog up my airbrush. So what I'll do is I'll put a little bit in here. I'll take a little Vallejo thinner, 
I'm gonna put some over here just so I can clean my brushes and stuff. And then I want to thin this down. Now, I don't want it so thin that it's like a wash and runs everywhere. But I do want it thin because otherwise you're going to get brush strokes. <clears throat> One other thing that I do to eliminate brush strokes is I use this retarder medium. And from my understanding, it just slows down the drying time. And it doesn't take much. So I'll just put a little drop. Yeah. It might be a little too much. Get some of that out of there. Get a rag, paper towel. Okay, and then I mix this up. And if it's a little too thick, then I can add some more thinner. If it's a little too thin, then I can add some more paint. But you really don't need a whole lot. So I want a nice consistency. So let's take these radios. And you don't want a big brush. I like using these. It's not a real pointy brush, but it's not a flat brush. So I can get in there and get the sides and, and get uh, little crevices. So I'm just going to take this and I get a good decent amount on my on my brush and it also helps to to move it around you don't have to paint it up and down and I'm just trying to go over it one time <clears throat> And I've got this pretty thin, so you can almost see. Once it dries, it's not going to be completely black. There are going to be kind of highlights on the uh, the surfaces that are kind of protruding out. And that's okay. That, that actually works in my favor, because then I don't have to go in and, and highlight some of those. But if I do want to put another coat on it, then what I want to do is let it dry and you can hit this with an air dryer and it'll dry really quick uh, but uh, I want to let it dry before I put another coat on it because otherwise I'm just smearing around the wet paint and I'm more likely to get streaks and uh, brush marks so I'm gonna do the same thing down here and this is one of those things that just kind of takes it just takes practice and finding out what consistency works best for you and your painting style. So I have a good idea how thin I want it. It's not really something I can explain. There's not really any ratios I can tell you because <clears throat> I don't measure and I don't use the same amount every time. Okay, so I'm going to continue painting in all my black, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I paint the controls and the knobs and all the, uh, the other stuff. Okay, <clears throat> now I've got my black all painted, pretty much. I, know. I may have forgotten a couple places, but I can always go back and fill it in. So what I'm going to do now is a little bit of chipping, but I'm not going to do it with an aluminum or a gray color yet. What I'm doing is I'm just lightening up the original color. Now this is some stuff that I had left over in my palette or my uh, pipette. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of white with it. And what I'm doing now, and you kind of, you really have to be careful 
with how much you put on here. And it has, should be pretty thin. So I've got a piece of sponge or foam. And I'm just gonna go around with this lighter color. And in spaces where it would be worn, I might get a little too much on there. I'm just gonna start dabbing in a little bit. Maybe along the edges here. Maybe over here where you'd see a little more foot traffic. right along the back. Now when this dries, it's not gonna be as stark, just depending on how light you made it. And right along the bomb rack, maybe along the edge here. So this is just gonna add some, some highlights. Maybe right along here where the door is. Especially right down here where you get more foot traffic. Maybe a little bit along the edge. You just kind of play with it. And there you get a good look at what it looks like when it's dry. And it gives just a little more wear and tear without being overly dramatic. Put some on the seat here. And you gotta work quick because this to me is stuff dries really quick. And then I can come back <clears throat> with some gray and hit the middle of where I where I've sponged this to maybe show that uh, the 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 paint's kind of worn through. In spots. And again, it doesn't take a whole lot. And you can really overdo it. So I think that will be good. I think that just gives it a, a little bit more of a variation. And then once I put it all together, it uh, it uh, should look really cool inside those big windows. Okay, to paint the knobs, what I'm going to use is some light gray. Now you can use silver, 
but in my experience silver just looks kind of really I don't know it doesn't look very realistic especially after you put a clear coat on it so I like to use grays instead of silver and or metallics and I'm gonna take a toothpick and I'm just gonna make a fine point with the toothpick I've got all these buttons. Let's see if we can come down here and take a look at this. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do is paint all these little buttons. So I just get a little bit on my toothpick. And I'm going to come in here. Man, let me... Let me uh, Get around here so I can see a little bit better. I might need to shave this toothpick down just a little bit more. Once I get it under the magnifying glass, it doesn't look quite as fine of a point. And this paint dries really quick on this. This toothpick really absorbs it. I'm just going to come in here and paint each one of those with a, just a tip. Now you could come in and dry brush these, but I like the look of each one painted. And I usually have to come back in and get a little bit more paint on my toothpick. So just like so. And then I'll, I'll do that with all the little buttons. I may mix up some grays, maybe some a little darker, just depending on the reference pictures and just to give it a little more uh, variety. And then I'll come in with my red and if I have yellow knobs that I need to paint or white knobs, and I'll come back in with a paint and I'll go over them with, with the different colors. Especially right along here where I've got all these knobs. A lot of these are going to be red, black, and white. So I'll first paint them gray, and uh, well, maybe not the black ones, but I'll, I'll paint the ones that are gonna be red or white. I'll, pay, <coughs> I'll paint them with this light gray, and that way my red's gonna show up to be a lot brighter when I go back and hit them with the red. So that's how I do that. All right, moving right along, fellas. <clears throat> got my buttons all painted. Add a little bit of gray where the Metal would shine through from uh, the paint getting worn off. And take a look at it here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my work with a clear coat. Now you don't necessarily have to put a clear coat on it at this point. And sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. I could actually come in with a wash right now. And the one that I like to use is this Africa Core wash by Ammo Mig. It's a, it's a brown, dirty wash. You can put that right on this Tamiya paint. However, I am going to use decals for the dials on the controls for the uh, instrument panel. And the kit comes with these decals. Now, I think they're all individual decals, just the way they feel. So it's going to take a little bit of time to put each one of those on there, if that's the case. I don't know. We'll see. But... Uh, Decal solution doesn't work well in my experience with the black uh, Vallejo model color that I used. It'll just smear it off. And so what I'm going to do is just put a clear coat on it with this. It's inexpensive. I've had this bottle for a couple years. And uh, I don't know, it works well for these kind of applications. You're not wasting your real good clear coats. I think that was like five, six bucks. For that whole bottle so that'll last you a long time a lot of people use it in modeling it's the same as what i guess they used to call future but uh, you can get that at walmart anyway i'm going to put a clear coat on this i'm just going to go ahead and clear coat the whole thing because i do have decals to put along here and some other spots so i'm going to get on with that 
and uh, we'll come back and take a look at how these decals go on. From what I understand, they're pretty good decals, and they do look like they're really good, so I don't know. We'll see, but uh, that should be a treat. All right, fellas. <clears throat> it's the, uh, the the day after tomorrow. No, wait. No, it's the day after I put decals on. <laughs> So I've got the instrument decals on and I got them clear coated. And I don't know, you be the judge, but to be quite honest with you, it, they really aren't that good. <laughs> and <clears throat> I tried to put them on separately. I think they were separate decals. I don't think you could put them all on on one in, in one shot. I think you have to put them on separately. But because some of them were attached to each other and some of them weren't, I don't know, it was confusing. So if next time I would do this, I wouldn't even mess with, pro I probably wouldn't even mess with these decals because <clears throat> they're not that great anyway as far as uh, detail for the instruments. It's almost a waste of time. I don't know, it took me probably f maybe 40 minutes to put all those on <laughs> and I could have painted them in like less than five, so... I don't know. It's up to you, but and also I got the seat belts on. That's my homemade seat belts with some uh, testers tape. Uh, I put some ink on it, some brown ink, to uh, discolor the tape. And I also put some buckles, some spare photo etch buckles that I had on there. And what I'm going to do now is do a wash. And it's not going to be like your typical wash where you you know, spread stuff all over and then you then you wipe it all off. What I want to do is spread some on there really thin and then leave it. So what I've got is my Africa Core wash from Ammo Mig. Let's get a little bit more light over here. And I thin it down with mineral spirits. And what I'm doing is I'm just dirtying up. I want the I want the mineral spirits to carry the wash, the pigment, where it wants to go, and it leaves a naturally dirty effect. I want to be careful up here with the seat belts because I don't know how that it's going to react with the tape, the um, the mineral spirits. So basically, it's a real thin wash that I don't plan on really wiping away too much. I may come in here with a brush and blend it in a little bit once it dries. But uh, I really just want it to go on its own. See how over here I got a little more... It kind of pools up a little more here than it does there. And I think that, that gives it like a naturally dirty effect. I can come in here and just kind of pool it up. Oh, the mornings. I get, uh, I got allergies and stuff. Sinus problems. So, that's basically all it is. And it's pretty simple. And again, I don't know how much of this detail you're going to see. I'm, I'm thinking I mean, you might see more than usual. But, you know, so this may all be for naught. And I'm doing the same thing on the inside. And this is just going to give it that dirty brown, almost like, uh, like dirt. And I'm not using black because I, I want it to look kind of grungy and dirty. And not necessarily just shading, because I've already done a lot of shading with the the uh, the pre-shading that I did. So this is this is more or less just to make it look dirty. Like it's because I'm sure they didn't keep their their plain spick and span on the inside during during battles and whatnot. Okay. 
Now, once this dries, it may dry a little bit differently than what it looks like wet. So and that's what I mean by coming in with a uh, with a brush and blending, or with a cotton swab. Okay, so we'll let this dry, and then uh, we'll come back and look at it and see what it all looks like before I put it together. Oh, I'll, after this, then I'll, I think I'm ready to put a flat coat on it. And uh, so, all right, see you in a bit. Okay, it's dried, and you can see here, it's kind of pulled up, and it's a little heavy, heavier than I want. So I'm gonna take a brush, I'm gonna see if I can kind of blend it with a brush and smooth out some of that. And it does wipe off pretty easily. So I can come in here with a with this soft brush and play with it and wipe away and just blend it in a little bit more. Get a better look at it here. See how it's all pooled up right here? That's a little too much. Not that you're gonna see this part anyway, but I can somewhat demonstrate what I'm talking about. Right along here under the seat. Maybe wipe it away here a little bit. Okay. I can I can even come in with a cotton swab. Blend it a little more. The thing with the cotton swab, it does take a little more off than the brush does. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Gives it a grimy look to it, like it's dirty and, uh, and worn. And with my pre-shading and the, the sponge work, and the uh, the wash just gives it a nice grimy look. Now up here, this looks pretty good overall. It's a little heavy here in the gun racks. We'll kind of blend that in a little bit. Overall, this looks pretty good here. I need I, <laughs> I got to looking at this earlier, and I'm and. Uh, I'm thinking, oh man, I'm gonna forget to rip up my masking there on the window and that's not gonna be good. But I'll try to remember, hopefully. If not, I'll be having to figure out how to take that off. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now I'll put a flat coat on it and then I'll come in here with some Mod Podge, some gloss Mod Podge, and I, I think I've shown this before. But I'll take some some of this stuff and after I put a flat coat on it I'll dot I'll put a dot of Mod Podge in each one of the dials and that'll give it a real nice glossy look like it's glass don't know how much of that you'll be able to see but it'll still be there so all right this is probably the last time I will actually talk to you before it's uh, completed and put together in, uh, I'll put this together and show you what it looks like completed before I actually close it up. And I'll be closing it up on the next video. So thanks for watching, fellas. I'll flash up some pictures in a bit.